There is a subtle but fundamental difference between how an artist promotes music and how a record label promotes music. An artist will promote the song, whereas a record label will use that song to find opportunities to build a brand, therefore monetizing that brand. So we need to think more like a record label and use and manage that music to find opportunities to build you and your brand. So let's look at some fundamentals on how you can build a fan base. So firstly, let's look at what you are asking of someone, the journey of the fan, but also the journey of you, the artist, and how that fits in. And a key mistake that most artists make when trying to build a fan base. So. I've got my trusty Apple Pencil and my iPad, so let's dive in. So the first phase when you are growing as an artist, you are, and I don't mean this in a harsh way, but you are unknown. Now you might have 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 or even 10,000 people who are in your Instagram or TikTok or, or on YouTube that follow you or subscribe to you, but relative to the world, of seven and a half billion people, that's unknown. And so we are trying to get you, your, your skill, your talent, your music in front of new people. And for those people, they don't know who you are. So for those people, you are unknown. And so what we are trying to hit to do here is we are trying to get attention. And as soon as we start getting attention, then we go into phase two. Now, phase two is awareness. So we are making people aware of you. So people are saying, oh, yeah, no, I, I've heard your song, or I saw that video, or I've seen you before. Now we've gone from completely unknown to I know who you are. They're not full on fans, but they are aware of you. Now for this, what we're trying to do is we are trying to feed curiosity, oops, curiosity, um, and, and bring value. So therefore also entertain is another thing that we are trying to do. Now, after that, the next thing we have is we go into the, the phase of people who are looking forward to you. So I'll put look forward. Now, what that means is people know who you are. They value you and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there you are today tomorrow, the next day, with your content that you're making, with your music. They say, oh yeah, the, you've got this new song and I've, I've been looking forward to this. I'm excited about it. They've gone from, I don't know who you are to, I do know, oh yeah, I know who you are to, oh, wicked, I was looking forward to this. And then after that, we get the, uh, the people who seek you out, seek you out. And that is the journey of a fan. Now, when people are looking forward to you, what they're actually looking for here is they're looking for depth. They are looking for more value with your content, more music, because they're starting to become a fan. When they seek you out, they are full on fan at this point. So this is the journey of a, uh, of a fan. Now, what's really interesting when you're making content and when you're making music is this section here, this is what I would call a value loop, which goes round and round and round. So people who don't know who you are, they're not in the value loop. They've got to find you. We've got to get their attention. But once we've got their attention and they've come in, now we've got to start building this momentum. We've got to start giving them value and entertain them and, and build that connection on a regular basis so they go round and round and round. And, and at this point, um, this, I'll just put here value loop, value loop. Um, this is first section, oops, this here, this is in, oops, interruption, oops, I can't spell, interruption. So we are interrupting people um, in their day. Whereas the next section, the people who seek you out, these are fans. So that is an interruption. This is people who are gonna find you. These are people who want your content, they're gonna share your content, and they're gonna seek you out. But what it means here is we need different content including the music, we need different content depending on different content, excuse my childlike writing. Uh, we need different content depending on where somebody is on this journey. Because if you're making content to, to, uh, to bring value, at this point here, it's gonna be very, very different to making content for this point here or even in this bit here. So we have to be mindful of this. Now, this is the biggest mistake that I see artists making when they're building content. What they tend to do is they go straight for this. They go straight for series five, episode three. You know who I am, and so here's my journey, and this is what I've been doing today, which is great for all of the people who are in this phase of Seek You Out. But what about everybody else? 
when you say, you know who I am, what about the people at the beginning who don't know who you are? And you say, you know who I am. And they say, no, I don't. I've got no idea. I don't know you. I don't know your music. I don't know what you're like. I know nothing. And so we're trying to force this narrative of, of you know me and you know my content and I'm trying to look after the 300 people in Instagram instead of saying, whilst I look after this 300 people in Instagram, I need to look after everyone else in the journey as well. Now, some examples of the seek you out content is when you say, hey, we're on our way to a gig. Absolutely great for people who know everything about you and they are into your journey. They bought in and they are there. But if someone who doesn't know who you are sees that you're on a way to a gig, where's the value? Where's the entertainment? They just go, there's someone on a way to a gig. Why are they going to buy in to you and your music just because they've seen you in a van on the way to a gig? It doesn't make sense. So we have to restructure and rethink how we are delivering content and music and value to everybody in this cycle. Guys, quick interruption. You're clearly releasing music and serious about getting results. So have you checked out DK Music Business Academy? It's got over 50 hours worth of courses, including the Roadmap to 1 Million Streams course. On top of that, you've got live sessions with me every single week and a community of like-minded musicians from all over the world. And as well as that, there's even my playlisting tool, Sonar, where you can get in touch with playlist curators when you're releasing music. What have you got to lose? Seven day free trial, links in the description. Let's crack on with the video. Now, when it comes to getting attention, you've got two choices. You can pay for adverts or you can go for the free organic reach, which let's face it is what everybody wants. They want their content to be seen. But if we are after free organic reach, we have to go to the place which says, this is where there is free organic reach. X marks the spot on the treasure mark. We have to go to that point. And right now, the point where it says X marks the spot, this is where free attention is, is micro content. It's TikTok, it's Instagram Reels, and it's YouTube Shorts. And the reason for that is because it's content creation versus consumption, which means for once, there are so many people consuming and not as many people creating in that format, meaning there's less content and there's more likely chance of some piece of your content going viral or at least getting seen by people outside of your community. Now, in order to get attention and to build your fan base, you need to follow these five key steps. Number one is creating entry point content. So remember what we just drew. Part of that is people are going to see your content who don't know who you are. So therefore, we have to bring them up to speed. We have to make content that brings value, entertains them, but also builds that connection that they can actually watch and say, huh, this is quite interesting. This is a bit of me. Let me come into your house and have a look around. Now, as soon as we've done that, we've got that attention. We've got them into the house and now we can start to sell them on who you are and what you do. Now, here's one way of doing this. Instead of trying to bring people into your house, what about if you step into theirs? You do something in a way that makes people feel comfortable so then they'll take the trip with you into your house. So it's what I call the bridge. So when you're making content, if you just say, here's my new song, and people say, I don't know you and I don't know your song. So if we say, well, hang on, my skill, my talent, and my connection, how can I make something in a way where someone new will see it and say, hey, I understand, I understand that. And it could be potentially, let's say as an example, don't shoot the messenger, it could be a cover of a song. Let's say you do a completely wacky cover or a, a cover of a song which is nothing like your music, but you make it into your own. What you're doing is you're saying, you understand this model and now I've made it into me. So instead of saying, you like the song, you're saying the song isn't important. I'm the important one. I'm just making something in a way that you understand. So you're saying, I'm the star and the song backs me up. Same thing with trends, same thing with collabs. You're doing something in a way where you're saying, you understand this, so I'm coming into your house to show you so you can trust me and now you can come back into mine. Then number two, split your content into fan and non-fan based content. Effectively, you are making content for people who don't know who you are, but you are also making content for the people who do. You are making content for those people who have been with you for the last year and they do know who you are and they have been to some of your gigs, but you are splitting your content. So not everything is new, but you're starting to think of where on the journey that fan might be and you are making content for both of them. Number three, 
three, and this one's important, 10 seconds of content is probably not going to be 10 seconds of creation. Now, what I mean by that is it might take you 10 seconds to watch, but it probably isn't going to take you 10 seconds to create. The same way is if I said, oh, a song's only three minutes. It probably only took you three minutes to make. No, no, it took me weeks and weeks and weeks. Now, when it comes to content, that 10 seconds might have taken you half an hour because of all the things that go into it. Because we've got to think about things like, the shot, we've got to think about the lighting, we've got to think about the audio, we've got to think about the framing, we've got to think about the clothes, we've got to think about the style and the font that you're using. All of these things make a difference of where whether a piece of content is going to be pushed out more. In the same way as if I make this YouTube video using my phone like this, it probably isn't going to get the watch time. Why? Because I haven't really paid much attention. I can just make the video and talk into my phone, but that hasn't told the full story. Number four, keep your content as short as possible. Remove the ego. The reason for this is because everything now revolves around watch time. So if you make a piece of content which is 10 seconds and people watch it for 10 seconds, it will go viral. As soon as someone says, not interested, that halves the watch time because all of a sudden you're getting that average watch time. Someone watched 10 seconds, someone watched none, averages out at five. The more people are scrolling straight past, your watch time is lowering and lowering and telling the algorithm not to push it out. So therefore, if you make shorter content, it's gonna be punchier, it's gonna be faster, it's gonna be more exciting. Whereas if you just start and say, all right guys, how you doing? Damien Keyes here. I'm wasting time and people are getting bored and they're scrolling because they're expecting short, sharp pieces of content. So when you're making micro content, Keep it as short as it can be or as long as it has to be. And number five, quantity is actually important in this game because this is micro content and someone might consume 200 pieces of content within a space of an hour. So if you're not gonna be there for the next two or three weeks, we've got a problem. Think of this as a boxing match. You go into that boxing match and you've got one big punch. Well, you better land it because otherwise you've got problems. You've got to wait till the next round and I'm going to do another massive big punch. Or you get into that boxing match and you think, you know what, I'm going to throw 200 punches. I don't know if all of them are going to land, but every so often I'll get one absolute corker. Now, when it comes to making micro content to build a fan base, I've got a couple of suggestions and a couple of questions I want you to ask yourself. So firstly, my suggestions are spend time at least every other day thinking about creative ideas. And one of the ways you can do that is spend time in the discovery page, looking at everyone else's ideas and pinching their ideas. And number two, think about your surroundings and where you can shoot. Take the stress and anxiety out of making content by knowing you have a good looking shot well lit and well produced when it comes to the audio side. And lastly, ask yourself these five questions every single time you are about to make content. Number one, what is the creative idea that is going to bring value to the other side? Number two, what am I gonna wear? I'm an artist, therefore I need to connect. And these things make a difference. That first second makes a huge difference of whether someone's gonna scroll straight past or take their finger off. Number three, is the lighting on point? And more importantly, how can I improve the lighting by just 5%? Number four, same with the audio. Is the audio up to scratch? And more importantly, how could I potentially improve the audio? Would I dampen the room? Would I buy myself just a little mic that plugs into an iPhone? How can I improve that audio? Because that will improve the watch time. And lastly, does the framing and style suit the platform? And what I mean by that is, if you're gonna upload something to TikTok, are you using the fonts inside TikTok? Because TikTok will like it. And fonts go in and out of style. So therefore, am I choosing a style and a look that fits the aesthetic and the consumption habit of right now? Now, if you can use these guidelines to make content on a daily or even semi-daily basis, you will start to see your engagement and your watch time go up. And if you do that, you'll start to see more followers. And if you're bringing them value on a daily basis and stopping thinking about that building content for people who already know who you are and start looking after people who don't know who you are and have just come into the journey, at this point, you should be able to build your fan base 
fast. Lastly, don't forget, this is all about your talent and your music. So get your music in as much content as possible because the last thing you want to do is build an audience who don't care about your music. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully that helps you build a fan base and monetize your music. If you could do me a huge favor, if this video has brought you value, if you can hit that like button because it really does make a huge difference to the, uh, to the YouTube algorithm. Come and hit a comment, come and say hi down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not? Hit the subscribe button because we're doing this all of the time. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck and I'll see you soon.